Hi everyone, Karen here. So as I promised, this is part two of my Adhesives 101 series. Last time we were talking all about tape, but today it's all about the different types of glue. There are so many different types of glues that you can use for craft projects, and today I'm gonna go through them one by one. So first, probably my favorite of the bunch, hot glue. I probably use hot glue in 70% of my DIY projects. I just made up that number, but feel free to go through all my old videos and let me know how many I use hot glue in. Probably most of them. It's great if you need the glue to dry right away because the glue is dry within a minute or so. And it's perfect for paper, cardboard, string, most craft supplies. It doesn't stick great to hard plastic, you can just kind of peel it up, but anything that's more porous, it's perfect for. So you do need a hot glue gun and you can get one for under $10 at most craft stores. And you also do need to be near an outlet if you have one that plugs in. They also make some uh, battery powered ones. And then to use your hot glue gun you also need glue sticks but these are also really cheap. But when researching this video I found out that fabric glue hot glue gun sticks are a thing and I really want to get some now. Normally hot glue isn't very flexible once it's dry but a Apparently these are, so I think I need to get some and try them out. If you've ever used them, let me know in the comments how well they work. Just make sure when you're using a hot glue gun that you let it warm up for about five minutes so the glue is really hot. And be really careful with this. Maybe don't give it to a kid who's under 10 years old because if you touch the glue while it's still really hot, you can burn yourself and it's really painful. And then besides the possibility of burning yourself, another downside to hot glue is that it makes all these little webs when you use it, but they're pretty easy to kind of gather up and throw out. It's just kind of annoying. And then also hot glue kind of has a weight to it. It's not a totally flat glue. So for some projects you won't want to use a lot of excess of it because then you'll see it and it'll look kind of messy. But then sometimes you want to use it to make patterns or to really solidly hold something in place. So it really just depends on what your project is. So next on my list are glue dots and mounting squares. These are really awesome because there's no drying time and they're really sticky so they're great for paper or scrapbooking or kind of anything that's kind of lightweight. The way that you use them is that you take the thing that you're sticking it onto and you stick it onto the dot and then you peel it off the backing and then you just stick your thing down and you're done. Just like the foam mounting tape, these glue dots do have a slight height to them, so your project will end up a little bit 3D. Now this one, I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with if you went to kindergarten, it is a glue stick. I actually don't use glue sticks a ton outside of sometimes with paper projects, but only if I'm working with a ton of really small pieces. It's great on paper because it doesn't dry right away, so you can kind of wiggle things around, and it's not going to wrinkle the paper like liquid glue can. And most glue sticks are acid free, which means they'll last longer than acid glues. I don't really know what the terminology is for the opposite of acid free. But since most glue sticks are made for children, the adhesive isn't always really great for serious craft projects and they can dry out really quickly. But if you do a lot of crafts, it's good to have on hand, especially if you're doing crafts with kids because they can't like knock this over and make a big mess like they could with liquid glue. After that we've got spray adhesive, which I don't actually have any of, but a lot of brands make it. This is an adhesive that comes in a can like spray paint, so you just spray it on both of the things that you're connecting together, and then you wait for it to get tacky, and then you just kind of press them together, and you have a really strong bond that works indoor or outdoor. But I tend to find that spray adhesive can be a little more trouble than it's worth because you have to set up a drop cloth and you have to do it outside or just make sure you have tons of ventilation. But if you need to adhere a really large surface area or if you have a ton of different things that all need to be glued, it can be faster than other types of glue. And they also make repositionable spray adhesive which is great for stencils because you just press it down, apply your paint, and then pick it up and it's still sticky for when you move it to the next spot. So now it's time to talk about liquid glue and we're gonna start with Elmer's school glue. 
another staple of elementary school art class. This is another just all-purpose type glue, so I can't really list every project it would be good for. But with my projects, I tend to use a brush if I'm using this to apply it so that it's a little more precise and so that I don't wrinkle the paper with a ton of glue if I'm using it on paper. But here's a crafting pro tip. If you want glue like this to dry faster, have a hairdryer on hand and just blast your project with a hairdryer on the highest heat for a few minutes and then your project will dry in minutes rather than hours. So besides just Elmer's school glue, I also have this not neutral pH adhesive. You can find this in the bookbinding section of craft stores. This is an acid-free glue, so it's great for projects that you want to last a really long time because it's not going to yellow, and it even says on the packaging, museum quality adhesive. It is a little more expensive than Elmer's glue, but a bottle like this was only $7, so it's not that bad. And it's gonna last you a really long time. So now, a lot of you might be wondering, what's the difference between craft glue and Mod Podge. I've got the big daddy tub of Mod Podge here. Well, they are not interchangeable. Mod Podge is a decoupage medium, so it's a little bit thinner than craft glue, and it has some sealing properties that craft glue doesn't have. A lot of people think you can make Mod Podge by just watering down craft glue, but it's not going to have the sealing properties of Mod Podge, so after time it's going to yellow, it's going to peel up, and it's just not going to last very long. So if you're using glue to decoupage or to seal something, just just buy some Mod Podge. It comes in tons of different finishes, from matte, to sparkle, to glow in the dark, to glossy, to super glossy. So I'm sure you can find a type that's perfect for your project. Moving on, let's talk about tacky glue and fabric glue. Tacky glue is another all-purpose glue, but it's a little bit thicker than Elmer's glue. So it's great if you need to be a little more precise, or if you're working on like a vertical angle and you don't want the glue running all over the place. There are a whole bunch of different types of tacky glue, so pick the one that's best for you. Whether it's quick grab or quick dry or clear dry, I'll link a blog post down below that explains the differences between all of those. Now, Fabric glue is obviously meant to be used on fabric. Some are machine washable, but depending on how hard you worked on the project, you might still want to hand wash your things just in case. It is flexible when it dries, which is kind of its main selling point because most other glues will be pretty stiff. And it can be a great alternative to sewing if you want to get a project done really fast or if you're just not good at sewing. Next up, we've got rubber cement, which is used for paper crafting. It is acid-free and safe for use on photographs, and it's not going to wrinkle your paper. You can apply it to one side and then immediately bond the two papers if you want to be able to kind of wiggle it around a little. But if you want a really permanent hold, just apply it to both sides, let the glue get really tacky, and then bond them together, and then they are never coming apart ever again. And if you're using rubber cement a lot, you're also going to want a rubber cement pickup, which looks like a rubber eraser almost. It only costs a few dollars, and you just use it to remove any excess rubber cement without damaging the paper underneath. Now this is the section where a lot of the differences between the glues comes down to chemical properties and as someone who last took a chemistry class in 2006, a lot of it goes straight over my head. But it is the differences between different types of super glues. You can find super glue at basically any craft store or even just corner stores and a popular brand is Crazy Glue. It's great if you need a really strong permanent bond, especially for some Something like plastic, which a lot of the glues I've already talked about don't really stick to plastic very well. Just be careful that you don't glue the thing to your hands, but if you do get it on your skin, you can remove it with a bit of nail polish remover. This one I do have. It is E6000 and... So, no, that's not upside down. Um, it is an industrial strength glue. I use it all the time in crafting whenever I want a really permanent bond that I don't feel like I'm gonna get with just school glue. It can be used in place of fabric glue if you don't have dedicated fabric glue, and it bonds really well to leather, actually, but just all kinds of materials it works great on. It comes in a bunch of different sizes from these tiny little guys for jewelry making to larger ones that'll last you a little bit longer. Just make sure that if you use this that you open a window because it does smell pretty strong and you don't really want all those chemicals floating around 
in your brain. Also, sometimes the top can get sort of glued on, so I tend to use pliers to open mine up if it's ever stuck, but you could also use some Vaseline jelly on the top rim and then the glue won't stick there. So then we've got epoxy, which to be honest, kind of scares me. I don't really use it. It usually comes in two parts that you mix together to get a cement-like bond. It works on a big variety of materials from wood to plastic to ceramics, but you'll just want to read the instructions really carefully on the kind that you get. Epoxy is what's used on like commercial airplanes and cars and bicycles and things like that. But if you're making those sorts of things, you probably know more about epoxy than I do, so I'm just gonna link the Wikipedia article down below if you want to learn more about it, and if you don't have eyes that glaze over whenever you see a chemical formula like mine do. So we're almost done, but I just want to mention a couple more specialty glues. Yellow wood glue is what you're gonna want to use if you're gluing wood obviously. You might want to also get some sort of clamp to hold the wood together really tightly while it dries. This one, while not really an adhesive, does have glue in its name, and I'm obviously talking about glitter glue. This is used to apply glitter to something in a less messy way than just using loose glitter. It's more for decoration than as an actual adhesive, and you can get it in tons of different colors. I just have silver and gold, but you know, go to any craft store, you can find this. I also wanted to mention plastic cement glue, which I hadn't really heard of before I started writing this video, but it's meant to glue plastics together, which a lot of the glues I've talked about don't really work on plastic, they'll just kind of peel up. I don't really have much information about the best brands or anything because I haven't really used it, but if you want to learn more, I'll link a blog post down below that explains a bunch of the different brands and types and things. <laughs> and then this is one that I found on the Utrecht site, and it is definitely not for any vegetarians out there, but it is rabbit skin glue. Ugh, it just sounds so gross. But it's used to seal a canvas before painting it with oil paints if you are a serious painter, because eventually, like after years and years and years, the acids in the oil paints can start to kind of eat away at the canvas. So the instructions to use it are a little complicated. It involves mixing a bit of the glue with a quart of boiling water, and then you paint it on the canvas, and then you sand it, and then you paint it in the opposite direction, but if you're at the point where you want to use it, just like read the instructions. <laughs> and then finally, and this is another one that I didn't really know about, but I kind of want one now, it is a glue pen. Basically, it's a ballpoint pen that dispenses glue, so it's perfect for any sort of really detailed work. You can also get wide tip pens to dispense a little more glue at a time, but the reviews online are a bit hit or miss, so if you have some money left over in your crafting budget, you might want to try it out, but if not, you can probably do basically the same thing with like craft glue and a paintbrush. And then finally, I just want to mention the brand Aileen's, which is the brand that makes tacky glue. They make so many other types of specialty craft glues that I can't list them all here. They have glues for leather, for glass, for jewelry pendants, they have glitter spray and spray adhesive and spray adhesive remover. So if you want to go a little adhesive crazy, I'll link a site down below that has literally 12 pages of different adhesive products that they offer for you to salivate over. I'm glad we have this bond. I'm glad that you guys maybe start to understand my love of adhesives. I'm glad at least a few of you are the same way. All right, so that was another really long video, but I hope it helped you guys or you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if I missed any of the glues that you use all the time in your crafting. So if you want to see part one of this video, which was all about tape, you can watch that right here. Or if you want to see the video that inspired this one, it was the What's the Difference video where I talk about a huge variety of craft supplies and what the differences are between them. You can watch that right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to press like and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me, and I will see you all again next week. Bye everyone! <laughs>